Hi and welcome to a brand new Patreon course on Entagma.com. This time it is not about Houdini, it is about Blender. Usually we are focusing on Houdini, but to be honest, in reality we are focusing on generative art and proceduralism. And as Blender recently added a procedural system called Geometry Nodes, we want to cover this too. So this course is called Geometry Nodes Inside of Blender. My name is Manuel casasola Merkley, and I'm happy to guide you through all the concepts and secrets of Geometry Nodes. If you want to follow along, make sure that you at least use Blender 3.1.0, that is, at the recording time, the current officially released version, and you need at least this version to find all the nodes that I'm using in the course. Blender used to be a mainly destructive program, so let me quickly delete this cube. If I add a cube in Blender, Blender invokes a command that creates the geometry of a cube. Of course I can go down here to the undo panel and change the settings afterwards, but what actually happens is that Blender undoes the command and re-invokes it. So this is not procedural. And what exactly is created here? Well, this is a 3D object and it is composed of two types of data. First it defines a local coordinate system and inside of this coordinate system it defines geometry through points and polygons. You can see this over there in the outliner. We have the cube here and it has an orange icon and this orange icon is the coordinate system or the object's container. So that is the data that defines the space in which the points are defined. And you can go down here to this orange tab. It says object properties. Here you see location, rotation and scale and these nine numbers make up the coordinate system. At the moment this coordinate system is exactly the same as the world coordinate system. You see this little orange dot here in the middle. That is the origin of the local coordinate space. But if I click the cube and move it over, now we have values here, meaning that the origin of this local coordinate space differs from the world coordinate system. Now inside of this local coordinate system we have points and faces and these make up the geometry. And it works like this. In memory Blender has two lists. The first list is called points and all the points get indices. So I have an index of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 for the cube because indices always start at 0 and these can be seen like names for the individual points. You can even display them in the viewport if you go to the overlays menu and tick indices. You have to enable this from the preferences if you check developer extras. And now you see these indices. This is a table, sort of, and after each index, the vector is stored where this point happens to exist in 3D space. So here comes the vector storing the x, y and z coordinate, and that is true for all the points. You can have a look if you invoke the end panel, and if I just select one of these points, you see that is a coordinate. And remember, these coordinates are stored with respect to this origin point not this origin point. Now we have points, but these points have to be connected somehow. And that is where the poly list comes into play. So there's a second list in memory called polys and it stores again indices, but now stores polygons. This cube is made up of six polygons. So we have zero, one, two, three, four and five. Now these table entries store the connectivity. So for example, let's look at the first face and if we select all the four points here, we can see they are numbered 0, 1, 5, 4. So the very first polygon might be something like 0, 1, 5, 4. And that is the indices of the point list. So the polygon just tells Blender which points to connect. And then it stores a little flag like C or something that tells the polygon that it is closed. Otherwise Otherwise it would be just a polyline connecting 0 to 1, 1 to 5, 5 to 4. But if I store this flag closed, it stores the polygon as a face. Now this is how geometry works inside of Blender. We have a points list and we have a polys list and the polys reference the points. All of this goes into the local coordinate system. This polygon data is not stored inside of the object. Instead, these two tables are stored in the blend file and you can see them actually. If you open up this cube, then you see this green cube here. And that is just the geometry data consisting of the point list and the polygon list. And how is this geometry data linked to the coordinate system? That is done here in this object data properties tab. If you go here, you see a lot of sections, but the most important part is that one 
one at the top here where it says cube.001. This is the actual polygon data. And by linking it here, you connect the polygon data with the coordinate system. So if you take the cube, press Shift D and make a copy, you see that the copy gets a different name and the polygon data gets a different name too. So we have two cubes now pointing to different polygonal descriptions. If I go to edit mode and change one of the points, you see I change the points here on this polygon description, but not there. This cube uses the old polygon description. But what I can do now, just to make the concept clear, is I can go here at the green tab to this link field and switch over from cube one to cube two. Now both coordinate systems are using the same polygon data. And that means if I'm altering one of the cubes, both of them change. Of course, they are offset because the coordinate systems are at different places, but the polygon data is the same. So they share the same polygon data. What you have to understand is that the polygon data is not inside of an object. It is living inside of the blend file separate from the object containers. And the object containers are just linking to the polygon data. And now you probably get why we have an object mode and an edit mode in Blender, because the object mode just tells Blender to work on the object container data. So if I do something to the object in this mode, I'm altering the transforms here. If I'm switching to edit mode, I'm altering the actual polygon data. So I'm changing the points and polygon lists. That is the destructive way of working. But Blender always had a procedural concept too, and that is called modifiers. So if I go to modifiers here, I can go to this drop down and add a modifier, let's say subdivision surface. And what happens now is that the geometry in the viewport changes. And now that I have a modifier, I can change the settings, like I can go up with the viewport levels to two, say, and the output changes live. Because what happens now is that the polygon description of this cube one, the cube.002, is fed to this modifier. And this modifier is sort of a little program executing an algorithm. In this case, the Catmull Clark algorithm. It's reading these polygons from cube.002, executing the algorithm, and then passing on the result of the computation to Blender for display. But that is sort of temporary. So it's filling a cache with the result. That means I can deactivate this modifier whenever I want. And I'm getting back to the stored geometry that is inside of this data block here. So this is procedural, but the only way to alter the behavior is to stack modifiers. So I, of course, can go in and use a different modifier, like for example, the array modifier, duplicating the geometry. Now, first we apply a subdivision and then we create more geometry through the array. And stacking these modifiers this way allows us to build custom effects. Nevertheless, this is not very flexible. And that is where geometry nodes comes into play. Geometry nodes is just another modifier, but a very powerful one. Let me get rid of these two modifiers and let's look into this menu again. And here we see geometry nodes. If we create one of these geometry nodes modifiers, we are presented with this interface. It's just a standard modifier. But as you can see in the viewport, it is not doing anything. And that is because geometry nodes allows us to create a modifier that we can program on our own. So we can define the algorithm that this modifier is using. How do we do this? We have to create a recipe and tell the modifier to use this recipe. And we do this by using nodes. Nodes is a way of visual programming. So to tell the modifier what to do, we have to create a so-called node tree, define the algorithm to use inside of this node tree, and then link this node tree to the modifier itself. Here in the interface, you see geometry nodes two times. The first geometry nodes entry here is just the name of the modifier. I can call it my GN for now, my geometry nodes, for example. That's just a name. But the second one is a link field, and this links to just another data block inside of the blend file. It links to a node tree. And how can we alter this node tree? Well, there's an editor for this. So let's create a new panel and let's switch this over to geometry nodes editor. And what you see here is the node tree consisting of two default nodes, the group input and the group output. How do we know that we are looking at the node tree that is linked to this modifier? Well, by name. If I just rename this, say to instructions, like so, you see the name changes up here too. And that means that this editor is displaying the contents of the node tree linked here. You can have as many node trees as you want inside of a blend file and you can change them by clicking into this little menu here. At the moment, we just have one and then you can edit them inside of this editor. So what we have here is a modifier and the modifier is using this node tree to decide what to do 
but at the moment it's just doing nothing. The setup is working, but you see nothing here. By the way, there is a different, more easy way to add geometry nodes to an object. Let me get rid of this modifier. With the geometry nodes editor open, if you select an object, you can just press the new button up here and it will create a new node tree called geometry nodes. Let me change this to second tree, say, and it will automatically create the modifier needed. So this modifier is in charge of actually altering the polygons, just as we saw with the subdivision surface modifier. But instead of using the Capo Clark algorithm, we can define the algorithm using nodes. And how to actually do this will be explained in the next episode.